controversy around the pasty over who brought it. The people from Cornwall will tell you they brought it over. The people from Finlandia will tell you they brought it over. But it doesn't really matter because it was a hit at every mine everywhere. <laughs> it showed up in New Zealand, Africa, Mexico, Upper Peninsula, Wisconsin, and the Iron Range where I got to eat it. Pasties come in a variety of shapes and flavors. Uh, this one here is your classic doughy meat pie. Uh, pasty, for those of you that don't know, is a pastry that's usually chocked full of beef, vegetables. Uh, it's usually leftovers because the immigrants were poor. They could take their dinner from the night before and turn it into lunch for today. This particular pasty came from Sunrise Bakery in Hibbing. And that's kind of the like industry standard up there. I mean, everybody went to Sunrise for pasties. I remember as a kid sitting and waiting in line, they'd open at like five or six in the morning. And if you got there at nine in the morning, they were all sold out. You'd have all kinds of like old people with like bags of pasties. And I remember as a kid watching them come out and being like, if these old geezers took all of my pasties, I'm gonna switch their medication. My name's Corey Adam. I was born in the mining city of Hibbing, Minnesota. Traditionally, all those miners were immigrants. And historically, all those immigrants were broke, which led to a lot of tasty, cheap local cuisine. As a stand-up comic, I've kind of always been on the poverty line. So my cooking style directly resembles that of my immigrant grandparents. I wanna show you some of my favorite cheap and hearty Minnesotan recipes to keep your stomachs as full as your wallets. All right, let's make some pasties. To start out with, we're gonna need to make the dough. The dough is going to be pretty easy, I hope. Uh, we've got some Crisco. Uh, I prefer shortening to lard, because I don't like lard. Uh, flour, salt, water, and if you have it, a KitchenAid. I'm pretty excited about this. I've wanted one of these for a while, and while this isn't mine, I get to use it. You'll have the dough of your life. First, we're gonna need three cups of flour. Whoa, flour. Next, we're gonna go to the shortening, which is some pretty weird stuff. It's like cream cheese, but don't eat it. I like to cut it, just cause that way, it's easier to blend, theoretically. Use one stick to use a little bit of salt. All right, now we're gonna turn it on to a low setting until it mixes together. Then we're gonna add some cold water until it forms a ball. All right, all done, nice and easy. Notice how I'm not winded. The immigrants that made this in my family probably were not using a KitchenAid. Set it all right on there. It's like really weird Play-Doh. Once you get this into a ball, uh, just you're gonna want to set it, then just cover it and chill it for about an hour. gone ahead and diced up most of the filling. Uh, we have rutabaga, we've got carrots, we've got potatoes, we've got onions, diced a quarter of an inch. We also have ground beef over here. Uh, that's gonna be half a pound. These are the potatoes, those are the carrots, rutabaga, and onions. Now we're gonna go ahead and add exactly half of this roast beef. And by roast beef, I mean ground beef. You know what? I'm tired of doing this by hand. <laughs> I think I've hit a wall. You wanna see my rutabaga? And next up, the dough. Uh, we've let it sit in the fridge for an hour, and now we got to actually make the pasties. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is flour a surface. Uh, now, we're gonna roll it out. We'll flour everything. In my experience, which is little, never have too much flour. Just flour everything. Just put it on the rolling pin, put it on the KitchenAid. This show's canceled. Now that I've successfully rolled this out to the perfect proportion, off camera of course, it's time to grab a plate. 
I cut a circle. They should have called it the Michigan Meat Pouch. I feel like that's too raunchy for a cooking show. And clear away this. And you're gonna be left with a disc that looks just like so. Now we're gonna add the filling. And you wanna fill in half of it uh, because you're gonna wrap it over. So you don't wanna actually fill the whole thing. All right, you just wanna roll it over. You kinda make sure that you're going pretty soft as the dough can sometimes crack. You can, you can crimp it however you want. I was always taught with a fork. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Once you have it all crimped and set to go, um, the next thing you wanna do is just make a couple little score marks. Nothing too big, but by doing this, you're giving the heat and the steam a place to escape too. So it might actually keep its shape. That remains to be seen. Now it's time for some presentation stuff. One egg, one bowl. Let's see if I can do this. I should almost put it in the KitchenAid. We're just gonna brush these. You don't have to go too heavy with them. But you do wanna make sure they're just covered. And we're gonna top it with a little bit of salt because who doesn't love a bunch of salt? We're gonna throw these in the oven at 350 degrees for about an hour to an hour and 15. Remember to check it because everybody's oven is different. So. And now we're gonna smell the food that we cannot eat yet. Great. All right, and we let these bake for about an hour, hour 15. Uh, and we have five of them. I made five right here. The recipe does make six, uh, but I made five. With all the ingredients and everything, you're looking at about $10, maybe maybe right around there. And we only used about half of our ingredients, so you could actually make another batch off that same amount of money. So when it comes down to it, each of these little pouches is a handheld meal. So you're looking at under a dollar per meal. All right, enough talk. Let's get down to Mao Town. I'm going to eat.